Hello, hello. Welcome to the Life in Transitions Experts YouTube channel, Facebook group, and we are streaming, streaming live on Instagram. I'm Courtney Rollins, your host of the LITE Life in Transitions Experts channel. Let your light shine. I'm also the operator and owner of the State Pro Service LLC, where I help folks make the probate and the state planning process easier, all while generating income and wealth through real estate. So today is part two. Uh, last week I talked about a will. Um, just jump right in. We talked about some of those things and some of those uh, documents people use as a part of their estate plan. And one of the biggest myths that I've come across since I've been in this space of probate and estate planning is the myth that having a last will and testament is enough for you and for, you, for your affairs and will avoid probate. In actuality, in reality, in North Kakalak, in other states, in North, it was North Carolina where I'm doing much of my business, a last will and testament will not avoid probate. In fact, the will has to be probate. It has to go through probate. That's the legal way that you uh, execute the last will and testament um, of someone when there is one there. Now, I'm not an attorney and I'm not giving legal or financial advice. I'm giving my opinion and hopefully a help to the folks. I've always wanted to say that if you do need an uh, attorney, I truly I encourage you to seek one out. Reach out to me. I can connect you to my nationwide group and network of estate professionals, including some awesome attorneys. So uh, never fear. Um, but I want to talk about some of the, the probate, some of the uh, uh, documents that will help you avoid uh, probate in North Carolina. And again, We'll always connect with your attorney to, to, to double, triple check the things that we're sharing here. Probate is the legal process of selling the affairs of someone who's passed away. If you pass away with debt in your name or assets in your name, there has to be a way of getting it out of your name and getting it to zero and putting it to the hands of other people. Um, and that's the probate process. Now, there are documents that avoid probate, um, but just real quick, I'll... If you didn't hear last week, if you didn't see the YouTube channel, go back and check it out. But we talked about some of the, the limitations of a will and testament. It's great to have, but you'll still have to go through probate is one thing. It is part of the public record, so it's open to public scrutiny and you'll um, and that all the things that come with that. There are disputes and challenges that happen with the will um, that can possibly be taken up. And you have limited control over some of the non-probate assets that do show up uh, in certain people's estates. So let's look at some of the ways that we can avoid probate with these documents. A comprehensive estate plan is the first thing you want to be able to do. And it's not super expensive, as you may uh, believe. Um, there are some very inexpensive document preparation um, tools, like Trust and Wills, one of the more modern ones out there that you can use to get a comprehensive uh, estate plan, all for less than 1000 around around $1,000, depending on the complexity of your estate. Feel free to reach out to me again. I would love to share my partnership with Trust and Will and other resources that you can use to take advantage of discounts and all of that good stuff. Courtney at estateproservice.com and I'll get you squared away. So let's look at some documents, four documents that help you avoid the probate process. One, one of my favorite documents, the Revocable Living Trust. This is an awesome document to help you sustain your legacy. It has some wealth generating uh, strategies you can use with it and some wealth protecting strategies that you can use with it. Check out a revocable trust. It is such in your interest to put your properties, your 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 um, businesses, things of that nature in revocable trust so that this entity can control it. This entity can uh, protect you and benefit from it. And um, it helps you protect, uh, benefit your family. Now, why would you do that instead of putting it in your name? Well, you know, we're very litigious, if I said that word correctly, uh, country. And so being able to put it in a trust can help you avoid some of the litigation that can happen if you are come after personally for yourself because the trust owns the asset, not you personally. Helps you avoid probate because when you pass away, the stuff that you own in your name has to go through probate. But if it's in a trust, it doesn't necessarily have to go through there. So there's there's tons of benefits. There's some tax benefits. Check with your CPA, check with your attorneys, and get it done. And it's not just for the Rockefellers. It is for also you, fella. So check out a revocable trust. There's also on many uh, bank accounts and insurance forms uh, and even these, there's things called joint ownership and beneficiary designation. Um, one of the limitations of this is if someone does pass away and they're on that list, then sometimes this asset has to go through probate to send it to the proper person that they have it connected to. So it's always good to have you know multiple names up there. Um, that's why a trust is also so great in, in conjunction with this because you can designate, okay, 
if this person passed away, then this is the next person, this is the next person, or this is what I want to happen. So it's very important to have that. But joint ownership and beneficiary designations on your insurance forms and your bank accounts, make sure you have that, check that so that you don't have to pay all those fees and go through the probate process or take have your family members go through that. You can also gift assets conversion. Um, you can just gift some of your um, assets. Again, check with your CPA to make sure it's done properly. Um, and you can make sure that this is designated in your trust or in your will and things of that nature to make sure that they convert upon death so they don't have to go through probate. Um, those are important things to do. Also, there are for certain uh, real property uh, transfer on death deeds that you can put in place to make sure that uh, that uh, some states already have it in place as part of the intestate law. Um, but if you did try to sell the property during the, the time of the probate, um, you may open up some windows there. So again, this is all stuff that's so important to check. My favorite tool is the revocable trust. For most situations, is where you want to go. But all of these are awesome ways to help you avoid probate if that fits your need. Again, if you want to leverage my relationship and my discount with Trust and Will, reach out to me at estateproservice.com. I would love to share that with you. There's other tools and resources we can share as well. And if you need any support, Hop on my Calendly, calendly.com forward slash estate pro service. We'll find a time to chat and see how maybe it'll be part of your uh, journey and hopefully help you out. All right. This is Courtney Rollins with the Life in Transitions Experts YouTube channel. That's L-I-T-E. Let your light shine. Take care.